Hello, I am recently back from the ABUG South event uh, down near Camberley in Surrey. Uh, this was my first ever attendance in person at one of the ABUGs. Uh, I've been to a few of the virtual ones, um, but uh, yeah, this is the first time I was there actually in the flesh and I went down there armed with my BBC Micro, my Acorn Electron, a uh, selection of Scions and my Z88, as well as a small fraction of my books, let's put it that way. Uh, and it was an amazing event. I had my own table with all my stuff laid out, um, had some grand plans for the weekend, thought I was going to get involved in some 6502 programming. And the reality was that I basically spent most of my time talking to people. And uh, well, to be honest, that's what made it such a great event. And it's partly because of that that I've come away from it with actually not that much video footage at all. So I thought what I would do is uh, give a brief sort of recap of some of the things that I got up to at the event, which I'm going to have to do uh, to the camera in this kind of um, vlog style, which is not something I tend to do very often, so forgive me for that. But um, I thought it was the best way to really articulate what happened. Um, but I did take a little bit of video and uh, I managed to get a short interview with um, one of the more interesting people that came to the A-Bug, but uh, I will tell you a bit more about that in a moment. Uh, so what is the A-Bug? Well, effectively, if you've never been to one before, um, it's a gathering of um, Acorn and BBC Micro uh, users. It's, that's what it stands for, Acorn BBC Micro User Group. Um, we get together in a venue. Um, sometimes it's down south, as this one was. Um, there was one earlier in the year, uh, a bit further up north. Um, there are some in Scotland, even others further afield in places like Canada and the Netherlands. And uh, it's a, well, it's a meeting of minds, really, or at least people who have um, a shared interest in all things Acorn. And that ranges uh, everything from uh, the humble Acorn Atom all the way through to the Archimedes and beyond into the sort of RISC OS uh, era, RISC PC, etc. Um, and, of course, being retro aficionados, there's um, often a, a, few, a few other devices on display. Um, I noticed that there was at least one Windows 3.1 machine over in the corner that I saw in the distance um, and definitely some people playing some games that may or may not have been Acorn related but we're a very welcoming bunch at the A-Bug. Um, so yes I got there on the Friday and I was there all the way through to the Sunday and I spent most of my time chatting. Um, a few of the most interesting conversations I had, uh, well first of all I was extremely fortunate to get um, Quite a bit of time with Zero X Code, who a lot of you will know is a prolific writer of new games uh, and demos for the Acorn Electron. And he talked me through the process of how you go about disassembling an existing game uh, and basically work your way through the code and try and decipher what it's doing. Now, my 6502 knowledge is not fantastic, but I do know enough uh, to be dangerous, and it was really, really interesting to just see how you go from um, a pure disassembled uh, piece of code and work your way through it, understand where the program code itself starts, understand where the sprites and the graphics and uh, various other functions of the game might reside in the code, and how you basically work your way through that, uh, developing your own labels and figuring out exactly what the code is doing. And bit by bit, you gradually manage to work out what each chunk of the assembly code is doing. And he actually showed me how you could pick out the code that was responsible for the menu screen uh, in Acornsoft's Meteors for the Acorn Electron. He's got his own emulator as well, which, by the way, is, is amazing. Uh, it's, it's a piece of software he's written himself. Um, it lets him do all kinds of debugging and uh, memory mapping while, while a game is running. Um, and even has a rewind feature, which honestly is brilliant. It even has like the VHS fuzzy lines going across the screen. So you, you can literally play a game, get killed, and then just hit rewind and go back to the point before you before you got killed, which I, I just was absolutely blown away by. Uh, so that, that was that was absolutely fascinating. And uh, he's, he's a lovely guy. We chatted quite a few times uh, across the weekend. Um, but yeah, that was really special for me, just getting the opportunity to, to talk to him and understand a little bit about how he goes about doing what he does, but um, yeah, it's it's really, really impressive. Uh, another uh, modern games developer for um, for the Acorn series uh, who was there was Chris Bradburn, who I'm sure some of you will have come across. He's done quite a few games uh, over the, the past few years. Uh, Night Ninja, probably a lot of you are familiar with that one, which is, is a very impressive game. 
um, and he's been working on um, an edition of Ghostbusters, which most of you may know for the Commodore 64, but he's done an absolutely tremendous port of that game uh, to the BBC Micro. He was showing me a little bit about how he was how he was doing that. I got to see um, an early preview of the game, which again, I mean, it's just brilliant. I have to say, actually, the colour palette on the BBC, um, I think, is actually better suited to the game uh, than the than the C64 version. But equally, he had a version of it that he created which um, used the C64 palette as well, um, which you know, again, is quite impressive. Um, but I had a lovely chat with him. And uh, he, he gave me a really useful piece of advice, which is if you are thinking about getting into writing games for, well, whether it's an Acorn computer or indeed any other retro machine, um, the best thing to do is to have a project. It's no good just reading books and, you know, kind of thinking about it, which, to be honest, is, I think, what I've done mostly. Um, I've tended to consume books on the subject and then get a bit stuck sort of thinking about how I'd actually put some of this stuff into practice. So he said, no, what you want to do is set yourself a project um, and have, have an idea about what you want to create and then just go about trying to build it. And you know what? If you start off building it in BBC Basic to begin with, if you're more comfortable with that language um, and that helps you get started, by all means, you know, go ahead and do that. And then maybe try and work out how you can replace some of the routines in the original Basic program with some 6502. And uh, really, that's that's how you kind of get started. And that's how you get better at it as well, because that's you've actually got something to aim for. And you go through that cycle of thinking, how am I going to get this done? But you know what it is you want to get done. And so that's where the, uh, the kind of the true learning comes in. You're actually applying the knowledge about 6502 um, to get something done. So, yeah, I really enjoyed my chat with Chris on that on that subject. Um, he also showed me another very, very cool uh, demo that he's done using a modern uh, games algorithm uh, that creates a 3D landscape that you can fly over. Uh, it's called Voxel. And it, yeah, it blew me away, I have to say. He showed it to me running on uh, an emulator for the Beeb. And you look at something like that and think, wow, you know, how... How how is that even possible? But yeah, he's got it up and running. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what he comes up with next uh, on that front. But uh, first things first, I'm actually looking forward to seeing Ghostbusters come out for general release, and uh, yeah, look forward to reviewing that um, in due course. Um, so those those are definitely two of the chats that really stuck out, and you know they were good long conversations. Um, where I had really really you know I was really grateful for them giving me their time to talk to me about these projects. Um, but um, in addition to that, uh, I met quite a lot of people from the ABUG who I've kind of interacted with on the forums over, over the years, but not, obviously not been able to put a name to a face, and it was lovely to see them there. Dave Hitchens, of course, who I've mentioned before on this channel, the creator of the Mega Games cartridge for the Acorn Electron. He was working on um, a, a, a plus two uh, unit for the Acorn Electron. Um, and he actually managed to get quite a bit of work done <laughs> this weekend, which is probably more than can be said for a lot of the people that attended. Um, but yeah, it was lovely to chat to him. Um, I got to meet uh, Dan Rolf, really, really uh, enjoyed uh, talking to him. In fact, we, we chatted probably the most um, because we were quite close uh, proximity-wise at the event, and uh, he brought along uh, his Beeb, um, and he'd also brought along um, his, his, um, his Archimedes, and he had a mini Beeb, which was really cool. It was a Raspberry Pi running in a custom case uh, shaped like a BBC Micro and uh, he'd even created um, a little screen for it, a mini screen, like a little flat screen inside a, a kind of cardboard housing for the monitor uh, and yeah, brilliant, obviously you had to use an, ex an external keyboard to interact with it but uh, really really lovely. Um, and by complete coincidence the guy sitting to my left uh, at the event, a lovely guy called Sean, he um, worked for Computer Concepts, uh, which is the company behind a lot of uh, famous software for the Beeb, including things like Interword, uh, which was my word processor back in the day. That was the word processor we used at home and at school. And uh, it was lovely talking to him about his experiences, uh, you know, writing software. And uh, he had a whole host of um, machines on, on, his, uh, on his table, including uh, probably the one that impressed me the most, just because it's something that, even as a lover of the Beeb, really does annoy me. The fact that the power cable is, is physically attached to the machine and you can't, you, know, you can't remove it, it's tethered to the machine. He'd actually customised a Beeb so that you could put an external uh, kettle power cable into it 
and, and remove it. So, so the beeve itself was completely uh, divorced from the power cable and I, yeah, he showed me that and I was like, wow, I would, would love that. But my uh, electronic skills are not up there. And I think it's the first time I've ever seen that mod on a beeve before. So that was, uh, that was pretty special. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm going to miss people out, I'm sure, but um, lovely to meet Brian Hogan, who runs the Rogal, the uh, Risk OS user group of London. Uh, he was sat to my right, and um, he was he was actually preparing for a, a presentation at the Rogal that was taking place on the following Monday evening. Um, great to chat to him and uh, get to meet him in, in person. Uh, and then there were, uh, as I say, lots of other people there who, you know, were all very friendly. We had, you know, uh, dinners together in the evenings. Um, and of course, Kieran, uh, who uh, from the Bitshifters Collective, he actually organised the event, and it was really nice to actually be able to say thank you to him in person for for putting it on. Um, so that was the event. I took a little bit of footage of the room that we were in uh, in Camberley, which which I'll obviously put on. Um, but I think that the thing that uh, stood out, probably for me and for quite a few other people who came to this event, was um, a chap called Elliot who uh, is 15 years old and he has a real passion for Acorn computers and that is quite special because uh, obviously age-wise he's not got the I guess you can call it he doesn't have the nostalgia connection to these machines that some of us do but it doesn't in any way diminish his passion for them and and his knowledge I mean to be honest with you some of the things that he was saying uh, he was comparing you know uh, versions of different monitors that people had at this event and saying oh yes you know that's that's actually the same model but this one's been branded as Commodore and this one's branded Acorn I, mean, I didn't know that kind of stuff uh, he yeah he really really impressed me with his as I say both his passion and his knowledge for these machines and I had a chance to catch up with him at the event um, and I'm gonna show you that short interview now uh, hello, uh, your name is? Uh, Elliot. Hi, hi Elliot. Um, you're quite young for this. Uh, how, how did you get into uh, Acorn Computing? I, um, well I've always liked old computers and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and then I got some game console, that old game console from years back. Um, it's kind of gone from there. Like, yeah. I, um, yeah, I never really had, um, I, I like the old game consoles, but they're like a stock gap. Because like, these are quite intimidating almost, because I can't get a so yeah, this was a good um, opportunity, and then I found about Stardot, and I went from there because I learned about the beam, like Stardot, and you know, I, that's where I probably became like, very much BBC Micro enthusiast. Very nice. Yeah. And uh, can you tell me what you've got here? Obviously, I can see you've got a BBC uh, Micro. So BBC Micro here. I've got uh, my cub. Yeah. Uh, I've got my Electron, which is usually up, switched up to my other CRT at home via RF, which is terrible. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've got my disk drive here. I've got a bunch of discs which are tested here, and I've got everything there. I've also got some damaged. Working at home. Uh, some software there. Yeah. Tape drive. Uh, I've got a couple of ROMs. I've got that many ROMs. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got some books. I've got an acorn guarantee, which is quite cool. Uh, very nice, very nice. Some. Oh, more down here. <laughs> yeah. I've got uh, electron box here. Look at that, the original uh, box. Yeah. Wow. It was a casualty of the drive though. <laughs> uh, this came off. Right. Oh dear, yeah. Um, and then in here, Very nice. I've got my tapes. Oh, yeah. I don't really use that much. Um, Lovely stuff. But these are all like real, but they're like, some of them are um, not boxes, like meteors. Yeah. And they've got some. Stuff here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you've got quite, quite a collection. It's basically, my entire collection. Um, <laughs> it's not, it's not massive at the moment. Um, but we're going to get an Archimedes soon, um, A420. Yeah. Which. I'm going to like more harder after that. I'm going to be really pushing space. Like, <laughs> I can barely fit my beam in my electron. Yep. Um, I'm going to have to move my electron out of the way when I, I'm going to have to put it on my, my CRT like it is now and then have my Archimedes in the main thing. Cool. But yeah. Well, thanks very much. That was, uh, that was really interesting. Yeah.
So there you have it. Isn't that fascinating? Uh, lovely to see someone holding the torch for the uh, future generation of us Acorn nerds. So in closing, uh, I want to say a few shout outs uh, to Sorok, to Pullens and Mr Squiggles, uh, all of whom came and had uh, some lovely conversations with me about some of my uh, bits and pieces. I think they were particularly interested in my Z88 and uh, my Scions um, because that obviously <laughs> reminded them of, of those devices. Um, so yes, hello, uh, shout out to you. Um, big thank you to Chris Needham. Chris and I had a great chat uh, talking about uh, all things BBEM and indeed what we both get up to in our respective lives away from Acorn machines. Uh, really enjoyed chatting to Chris. Uh, thank you to another Chris, Chris Morley uh, of Boobip fame. Uh, he actually fortuitously came past as I was attempting to fit one of his uh, 128 kilobyte flash ROM uh, Bebop kits and uh, Boobip kit, sorry. And he gave me some great advice and I got it running and I've now got eight extra ROM slots in my Beeb, which is, which is great. Uh, thanks to Jared uh, for his enthusiasm for the Video Nula project. So I got my Video Nula up and running. That's one of Rob Coleman's mods. And uh, Jared was particularly keen to come and have a look at it. And uh, yeah, we both enjoyed the results of that one. Um, and uh, thank you to Mark Oceans as well. Uh, it was lovely to see him there. Uh, it was his first A-Bug as well. And uh, we both had some, uh, some good catching up at the event. Uh, oh gosh, I'm th I, there were, honestly, there were so many people, it was a bit of a blur, especially uh, as I was having such a good time over the, over the course of the three days. Tricky, of course, how could I forget? Tricky and I had great conversations over dinner, uh, talking about um, how he develops games. It was really interesting to hear about the background to Frogger, uh, which is one of my favourites uh, of, of the games that he's developed. Uh, really interesting to hear how that actually grew out of, uh, of a demo. Um, he was trying to get something to, to work in, in code and then thought, hmm, this looks a bit like Frogger, and, and so, was, so was born uh, the Mighty Frogger, which I reviewed on this channel. Um, gosh, uh, Beadmaster was there. Uh, he had an, an amazing jumper. I wish I'd taken a photo of it. It was, uh, it was the Cyber Controller from Tomb of the Cybermen. It really made me smile. Uh, oh, I've, I'm, I, I'm, I've probably forgotten some people. I am really sorry if I have. Um, it is no reflection on uh, the quality of the conversation. There were just were so many people there and uh, it was quite a lot of names to remember. Uh, I've encountered, as I say, a lot of these people on the forums over the years and uh, I, yeah, getting to see them in person um, obviously was, was, was great, but I, I, yeah, I'm sure I'm, I'm forgetting some names. I know that there was a Stephen there who I think possibly is known as Zombie Dog on the forums. There was a Mark who I think is 1024MAK. Um, I hope I've got that right. I, I know I chatted to both of them and uh, they're both great guys. Really, really enjoy our chats. So anyway, uh, I'm going to stop here because otherwise I'll be going on forever. Uh, the A-Bug was fantastic. I will definitely be going to the next one. I hope you've enjoyed uh, this sort of combination vlog interview video. It was a bit unusual for me. I don't normally like just talking to a camera like this, but um, I figured it was the best way to try and get across what happened at the event, given that I basically failed to film a lot of it. Uh, so I, I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, do leave me some comments. If you really didn't like this, please also let me know because I won't do anything like this again. Uh, as I say, I'm not generally comfortable doing this kind of video, but Conversely, if you have enjoyed it, then okay, let me know. I might consider doing it again in future. Um, but otherwise, I uh, hope that you have enjoyed hearing about the A-Bug, at least, even if you haven't enjoyed looking at my ugly mug. And, um, well, maybe I'll see you at a future A-Bug, uh, because I'll definitely be going to the next one. I really enjoyed this one and can't wait until the next one happens. So until then, goodbye.